Hello, my name is Kim Coventry and I am with FitKim.com. That's my blog and please check it out uh, to kind of see my first intro video and some of the other information I have posted on nutrition and fitness. And today I wanted to share with you some cooking basics with me. The very first part of this segment is going to be on the cooking essentials as far as utensils and the items that you'll need to cook all of the delicious things that I'm excited to teach you. So it's going to be very basic and you can choose to purchase some of the things I go over or not. They are not required um, to cook and eat healthy. These are just the things that I have acquired over the years and I have found them to be awesome as far as cooking up delicious and nutritious meals. So to get started, I will just start with this right here. This is a casserole dish and there are temporary ones you can get where you can buy it as kind of a throwaway, but I like this one because it's glass, it has a cover on it, so it's great for travel, it'll keep it nice and warm. This is uh, for casseroles and you can do different things with it as well, even baking fish in it. So some of the recipes I share with you will, will be calling to have one of these. So this right here is the first item is your casserole dish. Now the next one I use Tupperware all the time and I'm sure everybody has Tupperware but if you do not have a wide variety of different sizes I would recommend investing in one of those kits that comes with all different shapes and sizes. So I have a whole entire cupboard full of Tupperware and what's great about it is this is my part of my lunch for today is you can use it to store leftovers you can use it to pack your lunch and also you can use it for things that you didn't use for dinner maybe for the next morning for breakfast or whatnot i'm really big on leftovers i'll go over that quite a bit um, throughout the different tutorials so that's that this right here is one of my new favorite pur purchases that i have um, these are mixing bowls. I've always used just random different types of bowls and I decided to get one that actually matched, which is nice if you have people over, but um, I have some yummy grapes in here as well. So it's not just for mixing. You can use it just to store some fruit or whatnot just to have available in your kitchen for easy snacking. So it's important to have a few different sizes. This comes with four different sizes. You can use that for mixing. You can even use it for popping uh, popcorn and just doing that for a movie or whatnot. Now a couple of uh, pieces of equipment I have. I consider myself pretty low key. I love watching cooking shows and they have all these cool gadgets. It's not really necessary. It's more if that's something that you are interested in and you have the extra money for it. So I'm definitely a budget kind of girl. So this right here is one of my favorite things. This I got at Kohl's as part of the Food Network product line, and this is a food processor. I used to have one of those little chopper, chopper machines, and it doesn't quite do the job that a food processor will. You can even do hummus with this. It just really does anything that you want. It's very affordable, uh, so check this out. The food processor, I got mine at Kohl's. This is one of my best friends my blender, and this is actually something that my boyfriend also uses as well. So if you're cooking for another person or a family, you can use this quite a bit. The blender, I use this mostly for smoothies, and I will use smoothies for breakfast, I will use it for a pre or post workout snack, or if uh, one of us has a craving at night, we'll actually bring this out, that way we can get a healthy snack, but still satisfy that sweet tooth. So, I would recommend getting a high powered blender. There are many, many cheap ones on the market. You don't have to get a Vitamix. I actually um, have used those before and they're awesome. They're about $400. This one I think costs me $80. So it is, again, I think it's worth the, invest, worth the investment. You can also look for clearance items as well. It's, those things go on sale quite a bit. So get a high powered blender, not one of the wimpy ones. Uh, a couple more things I have. Uh, this is probably one of the most important things is your cutlery. Uh, some of you know I worked at Cutco Cutlery or Vector Marketing for seven years, so I'm very, very picky about my cutlery. Um, but I use the trimmer. Some of you know what that is. I use this thing every single day, every single meal. It's my favorite. I know you're supposed to use uh, a wide variety of uh, 
cutlery depending on what you're doing. I definitely have to have a chef knife and whatnot, but this is my favorite. So invest in some good quality cutlery because you will end up saving money in the long run because you won't have to replace it as much. So having good quality cutlery is very important. Uh, utensils, everybody has different styles of what they like to cook with. I usually end up just using a spoon to mix up my items, but I do have a slotted spoon which helps when you're sauteing or doing a stir fry or whatnot. So a slotted spoon is a good choice. And then also, I pretty much use my spatula every day, probably two meals a day. So I'll use it for omelets, I'll use it uh, if I bake fish or chicken to get it off the pan. Um, you can have, there's all different sizes out there, I just use this one. These I use every day because I do count my calories. It's not required. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the pros and cons to that later on. So I actually use these every day as well. So these are measuring cups. I have a quarter cup to a one cup. And then this was a gift from my boyfriend. I love this. It is uh, measures everything from half a teaspoon all the way to one tablespoon. So you have one item to use while you're cooking. Very easy for cleanup. He got that at Bed Bath & Beyond. This I also use every day as a cutting board. I recommend, this is polypropylene, it's also another Cutco item. Uh, try to stay away from wood or plastic. If you can get something like this, a polypropylene would be your best bet, but a cutting board is essential. This is a strainer. I use this quite often as well. You can use it for defrosting frozen shrimp or uh, vegetables. You can use it for straining uh, salsas, pretty much anything. I do use this quite a bit, so I would recommend getting a really fine mesh stringer. This right here is a colander. Everyone knows what this is, but this is great for pasta, just draining anything that you need to get a nice solid one that you can have for a long time. And then behind me, I have cookware, which is pretty obvious. My cookware is also Cutco cutlery cookware. It's not required, it's just waterless cook cookware. I love it. I have it because I work there and I was able to acquire it over the years, so I do have that. But you can get any good quality uh, cutler or cookware. And then I also have frying pans back there. I'm looking to get the non-stick ones that don't have that toxic chemical in them. And I actually found a brand that has it. So I'll probably do a video on that once I've purchased it and used it and saw you know, how it works. So I just have a basic one right now. And then also baking sheets, I don't have any out, but baking sheets of probably three different sizes are really helpful. I do a lot of uh, cooking in the oven. I don't use the microwave, even though it's back here. I don't use it very much. I use the stove or the stove top. So really the baking sheets will come in handy. So I will put all of the items here. I will list them out for you so you have a quick reference, a shopping guide of what you need to get if you don't have some of these items. And what I'm going to do is every series, uh, every part of the series of this video tutorial, I'm going to do a different segment on cooking basics, the things that you will need to stock your kitchen to basically prepare you to cook everything that I ever go over and teach. So I'm really excited. I wanted to keep it super simple, just get to the basics and a starting point for you. That way you're prepared and when you do see future videos you don't go, oh, but I don't have that. I want to make that, but I don't have that. So I thought it'd be great to just kind of start from the beginning. If you have any questions or need any clarification, let me know. And I did have my half marathon this past weekend in New Orleans, and I had a PR of 156. It was about 10 minutes faster than my goal. So a lot of the fitness uh, exercises and training I've been doing really helped me with that. So I will start incorporating some fitness videos, and I'll post some pictures from the weekend. I had a blast. It was awesome, and I just really enjoyed it. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I really look forward to getting to know all of you better, and I look forward to that feedback always. So please check me out at fitkim.com and my YouTube channel is fitkim TV. So please subscribe or leave comments. I would love to hear from you. So we'll see you soon. Have a great day.